Fuck the shit. We here at STL Bucket List. Me, Dave, and Josh. Why? It's because of this place that you call Skate Laborious. It's glorious. And you know the flow big like Notorious. Uh-huh. It's from St. Louis. This how we do it. We coming through ruthless. Some of us end up toothless. We might go and bust our shit, hit an escape trick. But it don't matter because we still building it up big. Bigger than you ever seen before. Something like a dinosaur. You might break your fucking spinal cord. Be no more if you end up jumping on the skate. Skateboard, but we still do this and we're doing the work of the Lord. We got the kids in the underserved urban youth coming through with salutes, strapping up their boots, ready to go and go and put some volunteer work. And that's why we do it because they feel hurt. Yep, we got to get their insides better because the lifestyle they might go through is terror. They might okay. be into juvenile detention, maybe in school or after school suspension. Somewhere that they can't go until they run into a dude like me and and they say, whoa, hit the trick real slow. Then I opened the doors, and every time they came in, they said, give us some more. You should know that. But if you don't, now you do. Coming straight to you, me and the crew, the bucket list. You should probably come up to this. They like, he wrote this down. How did he come up with this? It's the no, SEO I didn't. bucket list. You know it's Uncle Lou. I'm coming through quick with the skate laborious crew. Feature. You know what I do when I be twisted, I be lifted. I be Ooh. lyrically gifted when I be shifted through the beat. What? Tune in on YouTube and Spotify too. You know it's Chris, Josh, and my boy Dave too. So we're coming in live. You know what Hell it is. No. It's STL bucket list show, bitch. My boy Luke came through with the assist And I came through straight creeping out the mist Freestyle, eat them up, now they don't exist I be shitting on them sometimes, I take a piss Where's the urinal? I can bury them They can end up going to a funeral And me and Dave can do the services Cause we got the church and shit But we ain't got no more time for that This is about some nourishment for your soul and shit Cause you know that you gotta go hard But if you ain't motivated, then you can't go hard That's why you gotta, um Walk with God and keep God first. I'm out this bitch. I just killed the verse. Woo! <laughs> Skate laborious. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the STL Bucket List Show. I am your host, Lucas Farrell. Um, we're recording this podcast at Half Coast Studios. Guys, if you have a podcast, if you want to start a podcast, this is the spot to be. They record the audio, video, they do it all for you, and they distribute it to all platforms. So if you're interested, go to Google and check them boys out. Now, we're here today. I'm blessed with Skate Laborious. We got Josh, we got Frenchie, we got <laughs> Dave, and we got my man Chris. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, what up, man? Thanks for having <laughs> us. Thanks for having us. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. What is Skate Laborious and what does it, what, what does it mean to you guys? I mean, we basically, we got an old neo-Gothic church about 10 years ago. We've been, at first, we just wanted to fix the building up and build a, a, a skate park and a youth art center. And it's sort of like snowballed from there. And we've been, as we've been going and going and going like throughout time, we've been like fixing the building up. And now that we've kind of got to a point where we have a handle on the repairs it needed, now we can really start doing what we've been wanting to do from day one, which is build an art center for underserved youth in North St. Louis. And and skateboarding is like a huge part of that. But, you know, it's also there's an art gallery and then we'll have shops and, you know, uh, mentorship programs and, you know, studio spaces and uh, all sorts of stuff to be able to create like an art hub um, in North St. Louis. Hell yeah. So tell me yeah. about North St. Louis. I mean, we've been there, we've toured it. Um, the area is up and coming, but it's probably a difficult area to be in, especially over the last 10 years. I mean, tell me a little bit about North St. Louis, where you guys are located at. I mean, you guys are on Market. and We're on like eight North 18th Street and okay. Mar North Market and like okay. Hogan. It's like a three-way intersection. I mean, North St. Louis is, you know, I mean, I love I love North Side. I, lo I love it a lot. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely has a lot. It's like an underserved part of the the city. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of, you know, like a lot of people left the community and left the church, left it to people like me. It is Black History Month, so I'm a tag that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You already know. But, um, but yeah, we came in, uh, they came and made something cool. So um, it's, it's inspiring people. And it's not as bad as it was before. And I think it's kind of because of the church, because it's giving some people some hope. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, opportunity i think you know in a way it's like kind of like that whole like when a door closes a window opens type right. of thing like there's a lot of i mean it was some i think you told me a stat that's it so it's some crazy like lra owns like 40 percent of the buildings in the city of st louis and there's like yeah. you know i think a huge percentage of those are on the north side there's like you know just tens of thousands of abandoned buildings. yeah i think we're excited 
in North St. Louis, it's actually horrific. It's like 85% of so buildings crazy. are actually owned so by the same words, firm. Guys, come and move by to organizations Louis. that aren't doing anything with them. So. Just vacant lots. Yeah. Cr- you know. Opportunity yeah. is just bubbling, and it's a soccer stadium being built. Oh, yeah. So much yeah. traffic here coming soon. It's like, you should get in now. It was an insider alert. Well, I think also one of the things you get in, on the north side is that, like, if you look at, like, St. Louis's history as a whole, like, north, you know, back when the church was built in the, you know, mid-1800s, you know, St. Louis was larger than Chicago. It was, like, one of the biggest metro and most important metropolitan areas in the country. Right. And then, you know, like, the railroads went to Chicago, river traffic and bar traffic wasn't as important. A lot of the industry moved out. But at the time, you know, there was, like, all this brick making and uh you know the shoes and there's a whole bunch of industries at the time in like the mid 1800s that were centered around st louis right and at the that, river. yeah and mm-hmm. at that point you know in things were just built different. You know, they built like crazy ornate doorknobs and like, right. you know, all this terracotta work, all this Elmsley and Sullivan terracotta. And so like what you want, but then you have all the industry floods out. So what you wind up having are these like extremely insanely ornate, like, you know, craftsmanly buildings that are built that have just been abandoned for 20 years. And it's like creates this like interesting, like juxtaposition of unlike things. We have this like amazing amphitheater, be- beautifully ornate hall with like, or church with like terracotta and murals that's yeah. like, you know, got trees growing out of the roof and so because that no one's maintenance did. And that's sort of like kind of the idea we have with the church too, is like the skate park in an old neo-Gothic cathedral is in itself like an interesting juxtaposition. Church, of not cathedral. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> the church. <laughs> cathedral is the seat of a bishop. We keep saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's keep not, saying it. It, I keep saying it. It's my bad. It's not technically a cathedral, but yeah. I get all the Catholic people get all mad at me when mm-hmm. I say that. Oh, every, I mean, dude, that's what I'm saying, man. And people get mad. So it's St. Laborious was was the church or, or cathedral or whatever you say. So when you got, when you acquired the building, I mean, like, tell me how you got your hands on that. And why did you say yes? I mean, that was a daunting project. So, like, um, there was an urban farm next door. And, like, I didn't, I just showed up there because I'd, I'd got a farm. That we, I read, the other thing I do is such and such farm out in DeSoto. And at the time, it was, like, 10 years ago, I didn't, like, know anything about farming. So I just showed up. I knew about New Roots on the north side. So I just showed up there one day. Like, maybe we can work together and, like, be sister farms. Right. And uh, there was a guy working there at the farm. And he's like, well, do you know anything about working on old buildings? And I, at the time, was a welder at the city museum. I've been working for Bob Cassidy for a while, building big, dumb, crazy shit at the museum. And I was like, yeah, bro, I know. A I know. wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a wizard. I was like, yeah, man, I know a lot about working on old buildings he's like well i want to work in this church and we want to help me shovel all the no one wants to help me shovel all the pigeon shit up out of the tower and i was like that's cool bro where are your fucking shovels at and yeah, so we the building at the time was owned by karen house but they never wanted it like the the church shut down in 92 you know because just no one was you know the archdiocese is not going to keep it around if no one comes there you know you do they're right. doing mass on sunday and like six people are in the audience like they maintenance this massive building and we found out from some other guys it hadn't really been maintenance since the late 70s they stopped kind of oh. doing anything to it and then by the time they shut it down in 92 it really hadn't had anything done to it. They shut it down and Karen House was like a Catholic worker's house and they were operating out of the convent. You got a three building complex. You got a convent, big ass church and a rectory. And so they went to the Karen House, went to the Archdiocese and they were like, can we, we want to own the convent. We don't want to rent it, we want to own it. And they were like, Archdiocese said, well, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you for free, but you got to take all three buildings. We're not going to break up the complex. Right. They're like, well, we don't want this enormous fucking church or that rectory. And they were like, well, I mean, that's like the deal, you know, lock, stock and barrel, you know, take it or leave it. <laughs> and so they took it. And they formed this other LLC to own it, to isolate himself from liability. But they were like asleep at the wheel. I mean, they run like an amazing women and children's shelter. Yeah. But like managing this enormous church is like not at all in their wheelhouse. And they like, it's just an army for it. Either. Yeah, man, it was just yeah. falling apart. Mm-hmm. And so we we went to them and we were like, yo, you and at the time, I'd say they had about five years uh, to, to really fix some of these issues up before. Like eventually you can't fix it anymore. Point of no return. At yeah, that well, point. you know, yeah. it stops being repair. You have to just tear out big sections and replace them. You can't. There's nothing right. left to repair right you know and every time it rains it gets a little bit worse and a little bit worse mm-hmm. and a little bit worse and so we we're like you should just give us this building and they were like please just please take, take it, it. Just <laughs> take it and so when so we took it and started working on it then and uh you know we kind of had talked about doing a skate park from from as, as a dope use for it from day one but like an art center was sort of what we were talking about and then eventually uh through brian bedwell who's not able to be here today i reached out to brian because yeah the big homie because i knew we brian, miss you brian yeah so, brian has an arm brian at the time and still does have just like an arm because i'd known through my buddies at the city museum that he had helped build the king's highway park underneath the king's highway bridge yep. and uh my buddy rob that passed away and uh, that's who i met ryan uh, brian through i was on the crew of the city museum with him and they helped build khvt and just had like an 
army of like 40 teenagers that were just like Damn. just ready like, to move. Yeah, and I was like, man, the we army need an army of, of 40 teenagers up, up in this motherfucker. Skaters yeah. are, are improvisers, man. Like they may not have any specific skill, but they're a master of all these little yep. things. And you can teach them and they'll listen, but they're building it for themselves. It's different when it's like when you're working on such and such farm. It's for you. You're building it different than what you would do if you're working for, you know, the city museum. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe not, but but yeah. there's something special about building something for you. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk about uh, the Laborious Urban Arts Center. So yeah. you, you had the place for a little bit over 10 years. When did that come about? Was that an original vision when you that went was, in there? It was and 2016. We officially formed it. But like kind of from the get go, we wanted to do like youth programming and stuff and art, like an art center for kids. Um, but, you know, kind of like where the silkscreen studios go is a moot point when like water pours in the roof every time it rains. Like, you know, right. we had to we had to fix the building. Gotta be like, safe enough. For yeah. Kids. You know, yeah. like there's no windows upstairs. I can like start building out the shops downstairs. You know, <laughs> right. like it's yeah. kind of there's all things in good. I've priority. been down there. Yeah. All <laughs> things in good priority. You've seen it. All things in good priority. And so, I mean, a lot of the um, and so the. Uh, and so we, we had to kind of take care of those issues first before we kind of got started on everything. But the so in 2016, we actually formed uh, the the nonprofit. And started doing That's it. crazy. But yeah, but it was sort of and that was yeah, um, six 2016 years ago. was a crazy years. year for me. Yeah. Yep. yeah, almost six years now. Yeah, so in November of 2016. Yeah. Wow. And it's just been evolving since then. So, I mean, what what does a vision look like of um, what kids what type of kids need to need this in their life? I mean, obviously what? North City, you know, <laughs> like what, what? No, I'm just saying, like, no, what, it's a, it's a, it's yeah, a like what? What would be the ideal day of like? Okay, we're going to the Lewis, you know, Laborious Arts Academy. Like, what are we doing? The Art Center. Like, what? What, is, what does their day look like? What are they doing? I think that something that's pretty valuable and and to just digress a little bit from that question, and I'll come back around to it is. Dave was saying that the, it's a free park complex that Karen House got, and they they were in a convent which is where the um, women and children would be. We Still own the is. rectory building, um, and we own the sanctuary. That, but actually across the street from us is the fourth part of it, which was already That's broken up, point. which is the high security level state juvenile detention center in Missouri. So, you know, every time we open our doors, we're looking right across the street at broken dreams. So really to answer your question, it's like, it's about these kids who are ending up in places like that, having their needs met and their passions, you know, lit up and, and held to a higher standard in life. measure. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's that prevention so that we can, we can give these kids a place, a safe place to be. Um, a and place learn where, skills that they yeah, can use in the real world. Where they can, yeah. th where they can be vulnerable because the streets, you can't be vulnerable. And be you know? creative. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And That's the, yeah, you got to feel safe to be creative. So... Once we once we get to where we need to be, you know, and we click our fingers and we're there. It's it's about bringing these kids in and saying, "Hey, what do you want?" And it's about going out in the streets just now, talking to all the local area around us to get that data and collect it and say, like, "Okay, yeah, they want recording studios or they want more tech," you know. And okay. and the answer yeah. is probably going to be tech because it's what makes the world go around yeah. just now, you know. And you know, it's yeah. In a lot of these underserved areas, in North St. Louis, but most of the city. I mean, quite frankly, like it's not like there's like a lack of like talent and aptitude there's just like a lack of opportunity Resources. to even yeah, be able yeah. to explore like what you're figure out what you're passionate about like you know like like you know like you do a lot of, you know you never find out you're an amazing photographer if you never do any photography you're just trying to survive in your neighborhood right you know there's just this massive loss of creative potential in a lot of these places you have you know your parents can't send you to art camp where you realize that you're amazing at printmaking you know right. and that that's that's what you're put on this planet to do that that's where your your passion is and that's you know your gift you can give to everyone else you know you just you know spend your day is trying to you know get by to the till tomorrow it's just it's just like profoundly sad for like not just for that individual but like for everyone yeah. and and that if you can create you know like a third space like there's this this idea of the third space movement that all human beings need a third space you know you right. have work or school depending on your age and then home but you need like a third space a hobby yeah. or, or just something yeah. that picks up and, and becomes if, and a career yeah and you know for a lot of people that third space is like bar or the bar or drugs or you know, you know like even even gangs is a third space you know people yeah. need a community environment and like you know and like they need in the time church was a third space yeah church Exactly. Church is a third of the people. Yeah, now exactly. we're in the future, and it's not like that anymore. You don't see eighty percent of the population in their Sunday best on Sunday, easy on Sunday morning. It's yeah. another day. We're granted we're out and we're getting it. And I think because of this, the church is the ideal spot for kids because it's another community. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I came from a church community as a kid, so I understood what it was for people to bring their kids to a place, interact with the adults, plan trips, go out and do things as a group outside of school. 
outside of your regular family because this is other families interacting with other families to hopefully become a better family through collective knowledge. Absolutely. And a regular day for a kid, even if they don't skate, I bet you they ask want to do a TikTok there because there's too many cool yeah. spots to do one. That's true. Yeah. There's, hey, too know, many, there's too many digital opportunities media. for them to do things. Everybody is trying to be in their own world. So much so, bro, I was in my own world so much so. I didn't even realize that place was a juvenile place until like maybe like last year at the oh, end. for real, bro. I did yeah. not know, bro, because yeah, like that's, that's like pretty unsuspecting. That's like, yeah, yeah. It's I like max security juvenile facility. Yeah. Bro, that makes me kind of sad. I need to it's go visit mm-hmm. these guys. Right. It creates an interesting yeah. dichotomy. It's kind of like, yo, man, like you know, what side of Hogan Street you want to be on? You know, like yeah. you know, like there's kind of two paths. Yeah. You know, like you know, like, and then like that. I don't know, I think that... Uh, and there's literally a fork in the road. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like it's literally a fork. Yeah. Metaphorically I speaking was, and physically, like yeah. it's in the middle I was of the lucky road. enough to go in there and in 2017, I was working at the church quite a lot when I first moved here. Um, I didn't have a job and I was just volunteering like a madman, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, saint. Like, <laughs> yeah, you were a yeah. saint. <laughs> I don't even know how many hours a week, but it was super fun. And, um, Most of them. Yeah, um one of the people who were working there across the street, they said to me, Hey, like we got speakers who come in and they just talk to the kids. And I was like, I ain't anybody. And they're like, you're here every day. You ain't working. You're like volunteering on a building selflessly, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Like come and talk to these people. So I went in there and I was just in a room, um, on my own, just like all of a sudden, like, Hey, here's the floor. And I was like, wow, I've never been in this position in my life, but I talked to them for like 45 minutes and and they picked my brain. Yeah. I can only hope, you know, um, I don't feel like I fell flat on my face, but I certainly, I don't know what the result was. I'm pretty sure they have some hope. I mean, could they see any of your tattoos? (laughs) (laughs) I think on top of that, like that studio, like that having a studio environment and like these inclusive creative spaces is important, you know, like, because social pressures are really hard on kids, you know, like, like if you're really into like robotics or something and all your boys break your balls for doing it, you're like, you're not going to do it. It's not like worth the social cost you have to pay in order to do that, you know, but if you have like a inclusive created space or people like encourage you like you know and, and, and you have also not only that but the resources in order to pursue these things and mentors to teach you about it then like you right. kind of figure out what you're passionate about and explore it you know it's like the good angel and the bad angel what he's saying like okay a kid might be on some tech shit and they might be like in this safe space wow this is brilliant work such yeah. a young age he might be a prodigy you go try to do this shit with your homeboy. Yeah, they're like, like that's yeah. some soft shit, bro. Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> making robots and shit like a little bitch. I see you making dicks. Making robots like a little punk, bro. Right. Yeah, so you get that money. Like, yeah. You're giving people a safe space, and, and it's so crazy because it's that, so true, that, right? kid no, in, it's exactly. that kid in North mm-hmm. City might might be an amazing musician, but he'll never know that unless he gives a space to at least try it. And if they yeah. fail, then they yeah. fucking figure something and, else and out. It might even you know? be his family that are actually yeah. telling him, you can't do this. Yeah. Like, you, you you know, that's dumb. That ain't going to get get you nowhere, you know? Let's need people to encourage you. That's yeah. huge in, in any journey. And the shirt you got on, man. I like this. It's the lemon? The mango. The man. mango. It's my, it's my other company. It's my marketing mango. company. Oh, here we go. It's like, PR no, plug. It's, it looks tasty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mango represent. By the, the, the way, the way the to all the people that's watching this, yeah. there's somebody with secret identity here because you named four people, but there's only three. But well, one of them is actually two people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Frenchie? Frenchie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Frenchie is John. So I got like, that name, Frenchie. It's a funny story. <laughs> the, the kids that came here for me was from Scotland, and we're like, what's your accent? I mean, were you fucking French or something? Are you fucking French? Because <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be working at the church, and he'd all be like, we'd all just be talking shit and stuff. And he'd be like, oh, you motherfucking Americans, using your fucking so inches. Ignorant. Inches and a dead measure and everything in a dead king's foot. And we'd be like, yeah, you know, we're just going to switch to centimeters. Too busy going to the fucking moon and winning all those fucking world wars. And like, uh, <laughs> and we're like, yeah, you're Frenchie. And I love yeah. that. They just owned it. He's like, yeah, I am Frenchie. Fuck yeah, it. Man, you yeah, gotta I know. Own it. Yeah, they, they're literally like, oh, why you, not Scotty? Like, yeah, they're, <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was Frenchie. Brian who came here, well, and he the whole way. he said, yeah. you know, if you like, he wasn't even gonna. It's so ignorant, but I yeah. love it. It's like so ignorant, and it's like if you're not from America, I'm not even gonna acknowledge <laughs> you where you're from. French. French. You're just French. Yeah, you're just like because right. everyone hates the French. Yeah. So yeah. then it's just like, yeah, you're cheesy. And we're in the middle of America. We're in the middle. Yeah, it was actually West, pretty like hot. Very rarely, like, but even St. Louis is. Yeah, I mean, so St. Louis so. began as a French colony. Yeah, it is. So I'm like, like, oh shit! I'm like, well done. It's you coming full circle. Oh. Yeah, I had a couple. I was Guess where the Olympics is gonna be in 2024? <laughs> yeah, Paris. All yeah. right, man. Paris. Paris. Man, there were some French kids that came by mm-hmm. the church like a couple years ago, uh, and they were just like lamenting about like all the French names in St. Louis and the way we pronounce them. Oh, they were yeah. like, yo, like Gravois and like Shoto and like, you know, like. 
Gravois and yeah. Gravois. Yeah, man, out yeah. by me by the farm, there's a uh, oh. um, there's a creek out there, Joachim, Joachim Creek. No, they say Joachim. Joachim, Joachim Creek. It's just Joachim. Like, it's just like this butchering of French yeah. French pronunciation. I, I do remember calling up Brian and telling him I was on Gravois, and he was like, Gravois, you're, Gravois. You're, you're where? Where the fuck is Gravois? I'm on Gravois, dude. Born and raised. Hey, that sounds elegant. Like, never yeah, called yeah, yeah. Gravois. I'm on yeah. Gravois, gonna make a turn down Chateau. Yeah, like, yeah. Where are you going? Like, yeah. No, that sounds know. elegant, though. Yeah. And then you go to Gravois in Chippewa, yeah. and then you're like, oh, that's not, like, it doesn't mm-hmm. sound like that, really. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I live I live off Chippewa and uh, Lansdowne, right in, like, South City area. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yo, tell me, tell me about, let's switch it up a little bit. Tell me about the craziest day at Skate Laborious. I'm sure you've had a million, but like, can you oh, pinpoint one? I don't one? even know. Of There's crazy of days I've Tell me a few. Tell me some, tell me some stories, man. I mean, I mean the people want to hear some shit. I mean, I guess it's like within what vein? Like, I mean, we've had right. some really insane Red Bulls days. been there. Skate stories Red Bulls or what? Been there. Well, well, Wayne skated there, right? Uh, yeah, he did. I that was, was actually pretty funny, right? So like, <laughs> he skated, so he, he hit us up uh, uh, through, through his other Shame guy. Shame on you, little Wayne. Yeah, to come through. Yeah, to come through. Is he good at skating? Wayne. I mean, he was doing his thing. We only had the mini ramp at that time, and he showed up at like four in the morning with like an entourage of folks were skating. We had heard from some folks we knew, uh, I think it was at Ramp Riders, that he had fell and bust his head the year before and that they had got a call from like somebody being like, hey, do you have the video of Wayne? They're like, well, we got him bleed, you know, we're patching him up. They're like, no, we need like impact. And they're like, no, we don't got there. It's like, yo, well, I work for TMZ. They're like, I'll give you 10, you know, we're worth 10, 15 grand for that. So the whole time he was skating that mini ramp, I was up in the organ loft, my phone like big money, big money, big money. Oh my God. Big money, big money, big money. And then he didn't fall. And I'll be honest, I wound up chatting with him for like a half hour that day and I felt kind of bad like wishing for his injury like he right. was like a he was a real nice dude I remember he remembered a bunch of people's names he well, was I wasn't one there he was well, a super no, nice he was a super well, nice guy but he, he didn't pay us he had a yeah, I know. He hey Wayne look like Wayne look bucks and they I'm, us, I'm gonna try my best to make sure Wayne pay I was at the concert <laughs> I'll be honest I don't think it was Wayne I think it was like skate manager guy it's he like his on a ride he probably had like 20 Mac Main I'm coming for you Mac Main whoever the skate manager guy was he they the, the gist I got from that one dude, whoever skate manager guy was like, basically like, he's like, do you want before or after? We're like, you suck my dick from me getting Lil Wayne in your spot. <laughs> like, you know, he was like very much like, like we they thought ride. it was a privilege to Wayne have was like Wayne. Super cool. Which it he is, was super but it's cool, but it's like, humble. honestly, man, y'all nice capitalize on it because y'all could have Really took some real good pictures. Yeah, at the time, he had video. He probably got video. We got yeah. photo, but we keep it on the low at the yeah, time, man. man. Yeah. I mean, that but, was... he, but they didn't like that he ain't paid though, man. And yeah. Wayne got too much money, man. To not he, be paid. Come on, Wayne. Well, he he could have donated. Like, you guys want to put it back into the park? Make a donation. Maybe we were waiting for this moment. Was, and the hey, thing was, it was yeah. like looking for two hundred. It was like two hundred. No, it wasn't a lot. Drop that though. I was at the concert, and I should have been. We'll tag him. We'll tag him in the episode. We'll see. He was cool. He was super nice. I mean, it was it was two hundred fifty bucks. I think we had to like submit him an invite. And to his defense, it was this this particular dude. Who I would name nameless, uh, who used to kind of, who kind of helped set it up, who is not the most uh, with us. It was not the yeah, most reliable. Bro, who's supposed to maybe submit an invoice and never? Nah, did fuck it that. Listen, there. man, I used to be around. You want that bad? You got to give an invoice. Mm-hmm. Like, I ain't gonna know. say no names neither. But dude, straight got it in two with me one day. Got me straight put out the church when I brought a whole bunch of people there to spend some money. We talking about? We talking program. about our? You already know what I'm talking. I know about. you talking about. All right. Come on, man. This ain't Toy Story. Homie got some problems. All right. Dude was tripping. That's the issue man. when you're trying to work. You know, like but he shouldn't harass them. That's probably why they didn't pay. That's the whole point of the thing like you harass somebody that particular individual is no longer associated with the yeah, church man. For, for the he's no longer with the <laughs> avengers know, r.i.p r.i.p <laughs> but you know like that's one of the risks you take when you try to help people out like you know at the time the guy we're talking about he was living in a tent and like yeah. in, yeah. in someone's backyard and he skated and we knew him and he was the guy doing really, the lord's work he really needed help <laughs> and, so we brought him in and we brought him in and like you know and that's that's something that i've talked to with a lot of people that do other like youth and community centers it's like a weird line to tell that we're still right now trying to figure out with like codes of conduct as we move forward to be a more legitimate arts industry like mm-hmm. uh, organization like how you deal with that because you know there is like some truth to that like hurt people hurt people saying and so like true. you know so you can't be like hey you know like if you grew up in foster care and experienced a bunch of sexual abuse we're not going to give you any services because you're too risky of an individual to have around like is that what we have to like if so that's fucked up like that's right. a really fucked up way to be they're like all right well you're just a pariah you forever. can't you can't put them you know? on like green level monitor right, but like how do you be handle like orange yeah. level how do you handle those situations and stuff and so those are the those are the type of things we have to start figuring i've out. noticed I, um, with you guys is like you guys take people in and you get people at a low point and help build together and not always but i've just i just can see that with yeah. your guys's not 
nonprofit that for differentiates sure. you guys from anybody that I've ever, I've ever seen. Well, something yeah. that else that I always talk about is like with, you know, we'll talk to a lot of people who work with other youth centers and they all tell us the same shit. They're always like, oh, the hard, we're like, what's the hardest thing you got to deal with? Like, oh, just getting kids to come in the door. I want to feel engaged by our program. They're not yeah. cool. Yeah, if you talk to the kids, you're like, how come you want to go there? They're like, your place is fucking lame, bro. I don't want to go it. there. It's so sucks. But like, black. we don't got that type you of problem. You walk in, like, here's graffiti dude, on the walls. People oh, yeah. are like, yo, you I think I could practice a meal and I jaw drop? They beat the door down, man. If we leave the door open, people just come in. Like, like it, it, it will always be there. Yeah, yeah, take pictures. Yeah, it happens. And so, like, you know, once you get the kids in the door, like, that's half the battle. Like, they want to be there, and then you can make a real impact on their life. You just send right. the mentors. Like, who is, who's the guy on our team that this kid relates to the most? And, and, mm-hmm. and you find there. somebody that relates to him, and there's people yeah. that Boom. have been in those situations that probably work with you guys. Like, hey, I've been homeless. Sure. I've been in this situation, and, and you can help those kids and give them a resource. And I think like, it's going to be a more effective approach to kind of, like, youth youth outreach. Yeah. We like ninja just having, like, angels. We like doing the <laughs> Lord's work. Yeah, that's a T-shirt right there, yeah. bro. New like, T-shirt. Uh, ninja angels. I want to shoot hard and the conversation though because you asked the question what was the oh yeah yeah, 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 we, yeah, we we so off go for it, go for it. yeah, yeah we and i was up. like just what was my brain the greatest was like, day okay, for, you. Me, yeah, for you yeah. for me um i believe it was the summer of 2017 summer skate contest we used to have them every year we'd be by july um Chris was actually involved in this. And this for back. me, I like, was there I, for that. Yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah, no, you I'll were. get to that. So, like, <laughs> at that point, still not, still not doing anything other than just like hardcore volunteering at the church. And I remember on the week build up to it, I went with a vacuum cleaner and I started at the main altar oh, and gosh. I went all the way from the main I'm altar right. through the whole place up the stairs to the balcony and did all the balcony as well with a with one shop vac you see wow. you're, right? you're, you're so out dedicated. just because i was like guests That's are coming this weekend this kid, guests are coming i don't want the place to be dusty i'm gonna get dusty. rid of this right <laughs> so it was still dusty but I, yeah, you know so i don't want that place to be was tall so, and i'm there just like this? for maybe like a week or two weeks before, like hanging stuff, making right. it look as pretty as it could be. This was before the uh, the new build. So this, yeah, this is old yeah. half pipe. Um, we had that vert ramp in front of Brinkman, yeah. and Chris the, the actually performed jump, his. Jump. Yeah, yeah, Chris oh, actually performed the set on yeah, top, top of the box. So jump. then, yeah, yeah, like so then it comes like day of the. That's another story. Yeah, freestyle. Yeah, we'll like, put a beat on right like now. The oh, bro, I will do it. Don't challenge me. It comes to the day of like our summer jam. And um, I remember getting up like super early, like this is gonna be amazing. I put so much prep in, and then, sure enough, we like open the doors at like noon, and like there's people there already, like trying to get in. <laughs> right. And um, it like just descends into like a hundred people in the venue. There's like Chris was performing one of his sets on top of one of her ramps, and like. Yeah, it's just cool crazy because no, it's, it's just like yeah, there's a DJ playing in between each set as well. Oh, was there's that when the big bands. Rob Blunt was flying around? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's shit. a Rob Blunt yeah, flying around. Yeah, big inflatable Rob Blunt. Yeah, there was. Up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. There, there was a there was a punk band that played, and the guy brought like a barbed wire, oh, yeah, like piece man. of wood, and like he's playing, and we're having our skate contest, and like he's I was, I was in the middle. Of yeah, yeah. yeah some Gigi like, Allen I was shit. Like, like I uh, can't even skate in this chaos, even though I love it. Like I'm just gonna watch this. I'm like emceeing. Telling Mosh people, pit. like, do more tricks, like, get more gnarly. <laughs> and this guy's just playing in his punk band, getting people to smack him in the side of the head with a barbed wire covered piece of two by Hell four. No. People are drop kicking him. Like, people are doing, like, their best skate tricks. We're, like, throwing out prizes. And I'm like, whoa, this is, like, that was our maddest. most unorganized content. Yeah, it was so unorganized. It sounds like it, it, so it, it, it was a pirate yeah. ship for sure. Yeah, it was yeah. a far departure from like a organized Red Bull cornerstone. Yeah, yeah. We, we have got like, way more yeah. pilots than <laughs> yeah. 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 that. That yeah. was five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. Yeah. We, But then it, it like it happened where we had like street contests, half pipe, like this big ramp that we used to have. We called the mini mega. We like do all that. And then at like maybe about seven o'clock or something, we start to. We have a couple of hours of transition. People are still turning up, but at that point, we go into our basement, and um, we had like a twin stage set up that year, and like a bar down there, and it was just madness until probably like two a.m., two thirty in the morning. And even then, I didn't go home. Then it was like, okay, braz off. Like it's time for the staff to have some fun, and we're just like yeah. there. It was just like that was incredible. Probably seen like twenty live performances. One of the best skate contests yeah. we've ever had there. We threw some crazy yeah. parties back. I mean, that was day. that was the way we had yeah. to fix the best building day? up. Like I was saying, yeah. like yeah. tell me about the party. It gets a little bit worse and a little bit worse every time it rained, and so like we just like had to fix the building right away, and so we just. I mean, a, a big party is a great way to make a bunch of money yeah, real quick. Celebrity. And like, yes, none of us, though. none of us made like any personal in our pocket. No, we trying to save we just all laborious. party in the party. Well, we in would the just name basically we'd be like, what's laborious. going on? I'd be like, oh man, we really got to take care of them bricks right there. Shit. And then we'd be like, all right, what do we need? We kind of we're all contractors. We'd be like, oh man, we need to make like 
it's gonna be like four or five grand. We're like, all right, well, let's uh, still party next week. And then like we'd, <laughs> we'd throw an event and then like, we'd be like, all right, man, so we only need this model, so we need a thousand. Left. All right, well, let's go to Home Depot. We'll get that. And like, it just, everything it's was like, we do name, something, buy materials, Wizards, go into the building. Do something, buy materials. Make it something out of nothing. Like, make it happen. straight volunteer work. Yeah, well, we had to, you know, eventually, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't fix it, you can eventually, right. you know, it's just, and then, and then like, it's all for not, you know, then, you know, if, if like a giant, you know, beams collapse or the tower starts to, Crumble out of, and then eventually, like it's just it's too far gone. Right. And yeah. You you see that in a lot of abandoned buildings around the city, where like they're just not a fixable structure anymore. Mm -hmm. And I and when we all you know it was obvious that like we were still in a point, but we were nearing the end of the fixable DIY so window. We needed to make something happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you can always fix it, but like I think if you know you just tack a zero, you know, if you're willing to like throw the wall, it at costs it, less you know? to just yeah. tear it down and, and do it. Yeah. You know, it. like if I think if we'd have got the building, like we're, our fundraiser right now, always we need to raise to destroy some stuff to get an oxy permit. We got to raise like a million dollars right now which is a pretty reasonable amount of money. But I think if we'd have got the building today instead of 10 years ago, it'd be 10 million. Because right, yeah. like we would have to, you know, there'd be that whole like area would have sunk in that section of the floor would have definitely collapsed. There's a piece yeah. of saggy foundation the pillars would collapse. The would collapse. Yeah. Like so, it might not even be doable yeah. anymore. Once again, the, the lowest work is being done, preserving the monumental yeah. structure. Of Gigantic but we're, we're at that point because of those parties, like because yeah. we threw a bunch of parties to right. get the money in order to spend. And then we all did the work ourselves. We're all they construction. Were, stuff, they were you know? so fun because someone wild. would yeah, come I to us them. and they would be them. they would be like, hey, like. I'm thinking there might be like 600 people and we'd be like, so cool, much we got to build a new stage and it'd be like Tuesday and they'd be like, you oh, get the, that done? That. We'd be like, yeah, I, I and guess. Not even so. started yet. And then yeah. like, yeah, we hadn't even started. To, yeah. Like, could you maybe just advance us like 700 bucks? We'll buy the wood bills. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, and then sure. like they stall for a day getting us the 700 bucks and then it's like, Thursday and we're picking up the materials from Home Depot the and the party like, Friday night. Yeah, <laughs> the party's Friday night and yeah. then it's just like wild. What's the uh, sound in there? Because I'm sure the sound goes crazy. Yeah. Sweat box, incredible. Sweat box. Yeah, in the basement, yeah. it's in the basement. incredible. Yeah, in the upstairs, basement, we, questionable. Yeah, upstairs yeah. it's like an acoustic guitar. Like, yeah, it's just yeah. super Blast. loud. But downstairs, mm -hmm. we I mean, the walls are four foot thick limestone and we soundproofed all the windows with like packing blankets <laughs> and mattresses <laughs> and stuff. You and couldn't so even hear be, anything. It was like yeah. a heartbeat outside. Outside, you're like chaos. Kind of like outside, you're like a like just yeah. and as you get closer and then we would get we'd have people out in front of the church just kind of mm -hmm. looking like guys standing on the street on the corner and whenever the kind of confused little kids would be like we're like are you here for the party like yeah, yeah. yeah. we'd be like right this will be usher them through the courtyard into the side door of the church <laughs> into the basement there's just this rager going on <laughs> and they're like what the fuck is this <laughs> right and you know the guy there's like 20 bucks and then let him in and we yeah. just did that oh and that that's how we paid for yeah. everything to say i mean that's literally what saved that it's building, poetic those, justice those because cars. the church was saved by secular music yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the yet. devil's music i loved yeah. it we were doing like fly um, in the community recently and I, I got to someone like first house and I'm like knocking on the door and answer and I'm like hey from the church down the street and like I we're we're you know going for a variance on our, our pyramids and stuff like that and they're like what y'all doing there and I'm like wait a minute what how long you lived here and they're like 10 years and I'm like we we got a skate park in there um and they never knew you, they were like, we see people skateboards turn up occasionally, but uh, didn't know it was yeah. going to you Kept guys. Yeah. We're like, yeah. you're our Straight closest go the neighbor. Knock <laughs> on the, the doors and just be like, hey, just want to let you know we're well, in we the were, neighborhood and we're doing this. I was yeah. so me. We were That's super, how good we were. That's we were how good super we were. careful yeah. media yeah. too. Yeah. Like we did. Because we, we, we had like a very delicate spot. Like I, we, we, I'm like very concertedly, I made an effort to like, you know, we got hit up by different news media, probably, you know, at least once a month, someone hit us up sure. and like, you know, we did like Vice News, we did Atlas Obscura, but we didn't, you know, like, like the, you know, you the, the HBO show. Yeah, the HBO, but like code enforcement Baby. agents mm -hmm. and like, they, they don't necessarily watch Vice News. They watch the six o'clock news though. Local so news like we don't do yeah. any of that, but also like we had also, because we wanted to make sure we launched everything for this art center, really got the message out there. And so it was really important to keep this like underground buzz. And like we we got organically on the front page of Reddit maybe eight or nine months ago. And uh, it, was, it was it was cool to see that that strategy was working because all throughout there was like, oh, I seen that church, it's in it's in England. No, it's in Spain. No, I heard mm -hmm. it's in LA. No, that's in Detroit. No, it's in St. Louis. No, me and my dad worked on that place. No, my <laughs> yeah. friend used to live there. And I was like, we don't, I don't know any of these people. Like no, mm -hmm. and then because like that's, a, that's good though. Cause we wanted to underground, stay like this, this cool everything. thing. It's out there. No one knows what it is or where it is or who it is. It's just a dope picture online. I want to go there. My 
my friend knows somebody because then now, now that we're actually doing media and we have the nonprofit going and all our ducks in a row, now we, we control the narrative. Cause if not, it's just whatever the internet says, then it's stupid skate party church forever. And nobody wants to give church money for skating. Yeah. Church, church of skating, you know, and all that <laughs> stuff. We had to tell the news that we not weren't hosting skating. satanic rituals yeah. because, it, I, because yeah. of one YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, I mean, for a skateboarder, it's like, Skating, skating, okay. get it. like yeah, yeah, cool. Well, you know, and then like, but for the media, they're like, oh yeah, it's church of skating, six, 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 oh. devil worshiping. <laughs> well, you know, man, you're an it was so good. <laughs> yeah. It don't even matter what's true; it matters what's first and what's last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's a matter exactly. what catches steam. What's and catch- if that story yeah. catches more steam, then that's cool. Oh, yeah. press is good press, my friend. And so now we can yeah, show yeah. yeah. I'll so take now, it. now but that's why you got to speak because negative press can be now we can counter press because now I got to speak on it. You brought it up, so look, let me clear it up. Right. So now we, so now that we're doing media, now we control the narrative we get to come in and we get to talk about the art center what we're doing and why we're doing it and the reason behind it it's not just whatever some person decided they wanted to write it's more about than us. a skate park i mean yeah. let's yeah, keep it honest church, bro yeah. even yeah. if it was only a skate park man we're olympic we're training olympic warriors now so <laughs> right. like yeah, yeah. y'all gotta like look at that totally yeah, different yeah. Yeah. how many olympics basketball now, yeah. courts are there out here how many tennis courts baseball fields yeah right. but here's skateboarding yeah. is an olympic sport that just happened in tokyo japan and now it's going to be going to paris france and there's not too many facilities for you to train and ability, right? Mm-hmm. No, that's right. true. The Lord's yeah. work once the again. There we go. Again. Oh my God, that's what the nuns told us. We had some nuns come by like about seven or eight years ago. They just showed up. We were working one day. It was like five nuns in the full habit. Yeah. Like showed up, and I we were like, oh shit, we're like hello, good afternoon, sisters. And like, this ain't gonna be good. They were super cool, man. They they got they got what we were doing right away. I remember one of the nuns was like crying and like hugged us and like thanked us for making it a place for kids. She drank beer with us. She's hell like, yeah. can I get one of those bushes? And she like, I remember we talked. She like, caught it overhand and like okay. what? Like, yeah, hey, yeah we have photos of us holding our hands, rolling around on skateboards. They told us we were doing uh, doing the Lord's work. So yeah. I stole I stole a line from one of them. We we were talking about what our mission and all that stuff. And then I'd steal this line from that one uh, in all the interviews and stuff. She was like, "Oh, that's wonderful." She's like, "Underserved urban youth. That's the congregation here now." And I was like, "There it is. Yeah. There it is. That's the line. There it is. Yes, yeah. sister. Thank You've you. Been rocking with it. Yep, yeah, underserved urban youth. That's the congregation in our is. church. Underserved yeah. because first of all, kids are unsupervised because people are on the internet too much on our phone. Yeah, too much. yeah, real life, real life's important. Kids, oh, yeah. kids are most in danger from times of 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. because the parents may not be off of work yet and they're out of school. Who knows what types of evil shit could happen? But let's let's be honest, we're on planet Earth. There's a whole spectrum of shit that could be happening. So mm-hmm. to have a place again, once again, that's a safe haven for people who are underage. Yeah, you can just mm-hmm. come here skate and chill. Right. You don't even skate. You can take some pictures or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Go spray paint. Like right. stay out of trouble. Mm-hmm. It's a place where they can kick it. It's a that place is, where they can grow. Base, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people probably get ridiculed in their house for doing their homework, but they want to do it. You know, if they come to the church and right. they do for it, trying know, to be better. Exactly. It's like if you want to try to be yeah. better, if you can, it, just come to the church, hang out. Maybe yeah. if it's just if you want to just get out of the house yeah. and find a safe place. It's and a safe place. Exactly. There's a the huge kids benefit. Are the future, man. Yeah, yeah and there's a big what it's for. Exactly, and that studio environment is super important. Like you know, if you anyone who's ever worked like like this type of place, these co-working spaces, right. and like you know, like art studios and stuff, like you have at like art schools and universities like that like large creative environment where you have a whole bunch of people working on a bunch of different disciplines able to you know criticize and critique and and work together and you know give encouragement and you know these multiple disciplinary environments are super productive right. and that like they're just like it's kind of like a um, like a almost like a like an incubator for yeah. creativity and collaborative, let's space. Be collaborative honest, spaces man. are if, so important okay so let's be honest here if we're being for real we are skateboarders they, they have an age out unless you're a, a straight warrior like your, my boy joss or like me like <laughs> most adults aren't trying to do that anyway so it's about the youth for real up until yeah. a certain age and then like the people that made it past that age group those are the mentors because they're the ogs mm-hmm. that live to tell the stories to the young homies that's trying to come up right yeah what's a myth that you guys have can like say about skateboarders because like everybody says oh skaters and how and what's a myth that, i mean you're, you're a big skater so what, what would you say about that um my favorite one is that they're just like reckless idiots who don't care about like consequences of their actions um and they're like adrenaline junkies but like that's my for me like when people think we're just chasing like adrenaline it's like if I get adrenaline running through my veins while I'm skating, I sit down. Because you can't actually think clearly with adrenaline running through. You might, like, start landing a couple of tricks in a row and you'll feel it. But you have to, like, push it down and be like, I'm right. going to get off my board in a second. 
But like in terms of being a skateboarder, you actually got to be pretty smart. You got to be a fast thinker. You got to look at a problem illogically. We're to talking other about people. reaction time. You know, here. yeah, you right. gotta you gotta be thinking outside the box because one crack on a sidewalk and a run up for your trick can change the whole way you would do it compared to like a so you run up into a right. face plant. Yeah. How does skateboarding and art like? Because I, I I love the dynamic of both combining both and in tech. It's art. always been both. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it's always been Look culture. Look at the bottom like of a skateboard. Supreme, it's usually collaborating Supreme with brand. an artist. It started mm-hmm. as a skateboarding brand, and now it's yeah. the biggest hype beast brand in the world. It's still a skateboarding brand. It still is, but it's yeah. the yeah. biggest skateboarding bigger than a lot of people are giving it credit for. Oh, yeah. We're just unorganized because you Thrasher. can't really judge. They sell it, it at Zoomies. Like people yeah. wear Thrasher shirts and yeah. they never even seen a skate park. People think Thrasher's a fashion brand, and it's the most hilarious. It's a magazine, right? Yeah, it's a magazine. Yeah, they they're just killing it. They probably love it. They're like, Hell yeah, we'll sell to you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, 500 issues is what they're on now since like 1981, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Thrasher's and the yeah. most organized in skateboarding. But yeah. We Would don't you, like yeah. a lot of work to do, and Ellen we're in the middle of doing it. it. So here we DC. are, pressing that narrative. I, mean, I think one of the most uh, important things, Josh, Josh talks about this all the time, is that like, like the, the type of the type of mentality you have to have in order to be successful at skateboarding is really the type of mentality you have to have to be successful in anything in life. Like, you know, it's acknowledged yeah. that you have to be willing to like try and fail and then try again and try again until you, until you achieve your, your goal. And then also like, you know, it's, it's like, like Chris was saying, it's a community sport, but it's an individual pursuit. Like, you know, people do it with their groups. They go out with your homies and you go skate, but it's like, like they can't be good for you. Like though. you have to mm-hmm. do it. People encourage each other. And that, yeah. that type of environment that skateboarding like has naturally created is really like, I mean, it's very analogous for like the type of environment, the mentality you have to have to be successful at anything that you're going to want to do. Right. You know, just I love that. Like the failing and getting back up, get up. You hear the quotes, you know, fall yeah. 10 times, get back up 11, yeah. you yeah. know, and skaters are always, I used to skate in the park, man. There was, it doesn't matter if you are trash at skateboarding, mm-hmm. you guys take it in and, and other, other aspects like music and all that. Like sometimes people are like, well, I don't even want to be in the studio with you. You know, like mm-hmm. you guys bring these people into your family. So like, I'm just like excited for what you guys have. So, I mean, what's, what's the goal for you guys five years from now? What, what do you, what are you, where are you going to be in five years? You're going to get that million dollars, of course. Yeah. You're going to get that million dollars. You about to turn yeah. St. Louis to Skate Louis for I mean, starters. <laughs> really? I, think, Louis. I mean, what I, I mean, personally, I'd like to create a large, you know, art hub in North St. Louis. Like, and so uh, the, the, the skate park is a huge part of what we're doing, but it's, it's, it's only one part, you know, like the, eventually the, the walls, you know, are going to be a large salon style, like 20 foot tall gallery. And then, you know, we have the basement as like skill and art training. And then we'll have, you know, like be, people being able to you know, like do workshops and thing there and be able to really create like an artistic hub in St. in St. Louis to not just, and then also like a destination, you know, once right. the ceiling is completely painted out and all the walls are there and you can come and you can purchase artwork, you can sell your work, you know, you can, you can skate, you know, there's classes and you can rent studio space that you can create like a, a real artistic hub that if people can come there, you can kind of nurture your creativity and, and, and then take it Avengers out. Interest towers the world. for creativity and honing new abilities. Yeah. yeah, which St. Louis is huge for is for creative. There's so many dope it's creatives that nobody scene, knows man. about, yeah, no. and they're probably painted on your walls in there. Yeah, and people yeah, from all yeah. over the world, but like a lot of local people, I've, I've seen it when I was there. Yeah, you know, some wow. sick, some sick work. I just want to cut it off the wall and take it home. Yeah, and that's <laughs> and that's kind of the way we're setting up now is to to basically build the walls out like a gallery so that you can sell it. You know, and most graffiti art uh, galleries, like you know, spots like uh, like the Fawn Box in New York, or they're, they're they're all over the place. You know, it's usually like warehouses with the concrete walls, and you pay an admission to look at. But you can actually purchase the work. So. So um, one of the next projects we have coming up, we just completed a LIDAR scan of the entire building. So it's, it's a, like a 31 gig file. Seen that. Yeah, it's seen that huge. on guys' Instagram. But that, that'll allow us to, you know, um, to really cover this church. But part of that is going to be studying out the walls and putting plywood on them going about 21 feet up to the bottom of the column caps. And so then we'll have a surface, a substrate we can attach other work to. So then when graffiti writers come, we can, you know, attach masonite or other plywood to the plywood that's on the wall. They can paint that and it can be removed. People can sell it. They can buy it. Artists, you know, will have maybe one whole bay that's just prints. It's right. just like, you cool printmaker, hang your stuff here. You come there, this is the $20 print wall. Right. And you right. offer this opportunity for people to purchase art. And we've talked about setting rules, like no piece in the church is allowed to be priced over two grand or something like that so things are affordable so people can come like if you want to come you're looking for a cool gift for a friend and you got a hundred bucks like you'll find something dope there and then you know making artwork not only selling it but uh purchasing it accessible to more people because they're like you said there's so many people in like i I know that are just like incredible like they paint like picasso in their basement and nobody fucking ever sees it. and they have an online shop but there's no traffic to the shop yeah Yeah. 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 but if you have this guy if you have this skate park that's like a well-known art hub that lots of people are going to to view the art like your chances of selling it go go up pretty dramatically and that um 
And also the fact that it's this just gigantic space, you know, we're talking about renting binoculars for people to be able to look at stuff. And it's and dope for their brand too, because yeah, they're like, look, look, yeah, you can hold it up in the park, like come, you know, come pop up shops, yep, you know, exactly. like farmer's market style. Yeah. The way we'll, deals the way we'll probably set the gallery up is you'll go to each bay and there'll be like a little key with, you know, QR codes on it. And so yeah. you can, you know, you know, they'll be numbered at each bay and you can be like on oh, number 42 and then you can scan, scan it. it on your phone and you can read about the artist, buy it now, Have a little bio, buy yeah. it now. And you know, and then, yeah. so we can really, so it's an experience, but also like you can't go to the St. Louis art museum and just buy something. Buy like exactly. And if you do, it's like a yeah. million dollar yeah, piece exactly. or like this crazy. And there, it's just like, Oh, that's yeah. a cool, that's a cool, it's, print but it's fun there. to go. People that cool print of a skeleton. What's that? Oh, then you like scan the QR code, like 40 bucks. Cool. And, and it's then, got his tag there. So you can go to his website and find other stuff or yeah, his exactly, or her website. Exactly. Promotes the artist. And then we'll have a, you know, the curators would come once you bought it, they'd pack it up. You could take it. that is it? So the skate park though, like obviously that has to wait to open to the public. Is that going to be like skate skating's from ten to ten, and then the art yeah. galleries from five well, to ten? That's 10? what I was about to say. Is as you your original question was where do I like, where do we see it in five years? And like what Dave's saying is this gallery, the skate park. But yeah. for me, I really hope as much as I love skateboarding, I love the diverse use of the the building as well. And yeah. I, I I mean I just get off on the fact that like you can see like you can stand on that balcony, someone will be doing like. Uh, like I say, like a dance experience or like there's yoga sessions or it's that someone's using it for drone racing, you know, the like we posted that. Awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's maybe that you space. Yeah, yeah. It's maybe four nights a week. It's going to be a skate park, but those other three nights a week, it could be for something completely about, We don't even know what it is yet. And it's and that's change. what I love. In, in five years, yeah. it's going to change. We're yeah. talking about rock climbing mm -hmm. walls. We have 65 mm -hmm. foot tall ceilings. Yeah. We've had mm -hmm. folks come and hang out of where the, uh, where the chandeliers used to hang and do aerial yeah. silks and trapeze. We've done that before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, um, there's just like, <laughs> I remember yeah. one Super Bowl we had like flame, you know, like fire. Oh yeah. The flame people oh, the, like yeah. running around the, and stuff. Yeah. And then at one point, like they drop it, like, Oh, the building. What building? One building. Like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, too much. Yeah, let's too get the light. water out. Yeah. Where's your wood, fire man. safety app, bro? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell us about the history of the building, because I know that, like, tell us when it was when it was originally made. And I know you said it wasn't rehab since 1970, but some of the stuff I've seen there, like the stained glass yeah, and yeah. like the, sh this so stuff they, is they crazy. They started construction in like 1856. 50, 56. 56. Yeah, and so it was the German, the Catholic German Society in yeah. St. Louis actually started building really? that. Which I, yeah. I think is an interesting point. Mm -hmm. But I. Like when people talk about like the cost of doing the renovation, like, so for example, like modernizing the electric system. So if you think about the church was built in 1856, Edison invented the light bulb in 1879 and it was commercially Shit. available in 80, 1882, right around what? the time they were finishing the church. Right. Yeah. So like, if you look up at the ceiling, oh, that was a 30 -year there's all these holes there. That's where the chandeliers used to hang. The, church, the priest would go up in the attic and crank the chandeliers down to the ground so they could light all the candles and then crank Every day, every up. Sunday morning. Yeah, for, yeah. And so like, so you, you had this, this long construction period like we were we we're uh, Ted when he was helping us uh core drill out for some of the toilets that we put Whoa, in he pulled this slug of concrete lit. out and he was like That'd when they fire. poured this concrete Abraham Lincoln was still a lawyer he's like it's it's, it's just it's mm -hmm. a really old building and they just don't build stuff oh, like Abraham that. Lincoln was still a lawyer then <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so the Jeez. uh the foundation blocks for the bell tower um they're like they're these huge sandstone blocks they were limestone. all yeah sorry limestone limestone um it's a Scottish coming out at me um <laughs> yeah and uh, Limestone oh. blocks, and the, uh, I mean, those things are just laced with fossils as well. It's really Amazing. cool. If you actually go up to a building and look close enough, you'll see tons of trace fossils, tons of actual fossils. But they were taken out, built into these big cubes, and put in linseed oil for six months. Each block, before it even went near our building, spent six months being just like, absorbing linseed oil. So that different. it's weather everyone's resistant. Unique. Yeah, everyone's yeah. Unique yeah. At that point. Um, yeah, we. I, yeah. Went, I went to the Arch Theologian archives years ago, and you can. It's in Kirkwood. You can go read all about it. And like, they basically built a town around the church. Like, you know, they had to yeah. create a brickyard yeah. on site. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, when they those. Be if you go up in that attic I was talking about, you can see these like large beams, like an upside down ship that makes that roof. But you know, there were no power tools back then. I mean, those two dudes like. Mm -hmm. vroom, so for the thirty yeah. years that they were building it, they yeah, had two, like a t people lived there. Yeah, like, they yeah, lived people, in work. I mean, your whole career. A whole, yeah, you know, yeah. you had to figure like that altar that was up there. Years. The, you yeah. know, like that was a marble shop. It was a someone's masterpiece. So hand carved Italian marble. They barged everything in. You know, they you have to build the a marble. I find out recently actually believe is from Germany. Germany. Yeah, Germany is, is like our main all area. We have this really nice, it could be that it's that it was from originally Italy, but then it went to Germany, got shaped, and then came, came to us. Wow. So yeah, 
Um, I believe that the whole main altar, apart from the bricks, actually Italy, Germany, and St. Louis. Well, an interesting part yeah. about it is like the society that built those types of buildings doesn't exist anymore. You know, you had to figure back in the early eight, mid 1800s, you know, you had this massive German community that was super rich and powerful in St. Louis. Like the Germans that lived in North St. Louis, I mean, they controlled a lot of the large industries. They're one of the most powerful communities and one of the most important metropolitan cities in, in, in the country. And so like all everyone in their community gives 10%, they tithe it. Mm -hmm. You can build mm -hmm. these enormous structures, but like that type of community inside like that doesn't exist anymore right. to build you know these giant structures for for and it never will and it not not in the same oh, way I think because did. the concept of ties that shit need to be re re looked at yeah I, I mean people tie want to be down with some shit but don't want to put in hold on people bro. build soccer stadiums now yeah yeah but, but, instead but, of churches but it's not know? like everyone decides you know I love this soccer team and so I'm going to give ten percent out of every paycheck every fan franchise. all forty thousand fans them, you know yeah. like that's it's, because it's just a different setup yeah I think but that's a change in of culture. Exactly. I think it's yeah. the, the modern thing is that people are but people we are hoarding wealth though. to an extent now that that sadly it's like one donator. The like wealth someone out there could just give us a million dollars if they oh, felt like if, right, you're you know, then, if you're out there. Yeah. If you're listening, I mean, if you're listening right you know, now. And yeah. that would be a great story, like to be yeah. a part of that project. Like if I had multiple million dollars, like that would be a project that I would want to put my money into. Yeah. And and we talked about Even that. Even if you don't want to give it a million, you can give a couple bands and put a ski mask on and be an anonymous donor. No, but there's there's over yeah. three million people in the greater St. Louis area. Like if the, if people get behind this, and that's what I hope this podcast sheds light on, is like the story behind it. It's more than just a skate park. It's more than abandoned church. People think it's just this cool little project. Like a passion. It's more than a passion nephews, project. It's bigger, it's, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's bigger than you. hopeful your grandchildren. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not going to be here in the end. We all got to get up out of here. Yeah. I think for, it's, for yeah, it's a, cult, a counter culture to the way that the system's currently run. People aren't getting good education in St. Louis. People aren't getting good support when they're not in school. So, like, it's just a bunch of people that are, are like, hey, we can build something from the ground up and we can take this back. And there is, it's very reminiscent of the 1800s that we're talking about. Right. It's like, I give 10% of my, yeah. my <laughs> more than 10% of my waking hours well, a well, year to this building, yeah. you know? I'm sure so you guys like, are way it's, more. It's like, just a new generation. Yeah, yeah, it's he's, like, he's the best example. Like, that's what made me even want to even work with y'all because it's like, damn. This motherfucker ain't even from St. Louis. He's straight <laughs> going hard for the city. Yeah, yeah. I gotta hear. But you came here and you probably like you told me the story before they got here is you came here and you wanted to be a part of something and yep. you immediately walked in the church and it felt like now they're your family. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I haven't. Um, I haven't looked back. Yeah. One of like one of the questions I seen them when I was like preparing for this podcast that you might ask is like, who would I have? lunch with on a dream oh, day yeah, yeah. and I was sitting at work this morning I was like my sister I haven't seen her for four years Aww. um and like I lived with her before I came over here but yeah um like once I leave here tonight I'm going to to go and see Uncle John who heard about is, Uncle yeah, John. Johnny D Johnny D shout out Uncle John Johnny motherfucking D <laughs> <laughs> he hates that and he'll love that that's in there <laughs> um so <laughs> yeah actually uh 65th birthday today like yeah. good on him um yeah he he's like ex maintenance man at city museum invaluable to that place invaluable to the first church. guy we I brought mean, to the project two yeah. of the coolest places in st louis like yeah scale laborious city museum two of the most unique places in the world that's what makes st louis special every yeah. top 10 list across the nation he doesn't think he's a wizard that's crazy he's yeah. a wizard I mean, shout out uncle john john yeah. knows he's a wizard <laughs> uncle john is yeah different breed of human and and like that's he the thing high, you know uncle john high level wizard yeah yeah he's <laughs> he's, he's, beyond, he's a spirit or something yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the double door for the church yeah <laughs> so like yeah i mean i was thinking like yeah i haven't seen my sister in four years like that's mm -hmm. but that's part of like it, it really goes into a calculation when i'm like hey i could go back to scotland like i got a young family as well now and it's like uh i don't know i miss something with the church i'm like i i'm like kind You're of home. rooted to it yeah You're and it, it is yeah my wife's very much aware she's learning how to do grant writing now so that she can join as well and oh, that's yeah. that's a thing it's like her kind of rules were like she didn't want to overlap with me, so we'd both have two different experiences. Right. And, and it's a family that, thing. I, I control I, everything. I've heard, heard to talk church. to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard stories about you guys, and it's a family thing. Like yeah, the wife no, helps out. Everybody's partners really help. Is. Everybody's yeah. brothers yeah. are coming. Like when you need, when you were fixing the roof, like you had yeah. people out there like coming together to get on this roof. Like who's doing that? No, yeah. not even a roofing company wants to get up and do that roof. Yeah. I'm sure you guys got. <laughs> we got some cool people though. Shout out to Jesse with University Roofing. Jesse, we got. Jesse is uh, through the church. Like we, one of the things we'd be able to find is like we kind of um, attract kind of like like-minded 
people, which is something that I noticed happened with the city museum is that like people, people just show up and who are who find out what you're doing and they like it. And they I mean, stay. the same way that mm-hmm. and Josh they showed up and shout out my they, boy, Jay Toth yeah, too. And Jay, yeah, Jay yeah. Toth and a, a bunch of other folks. And that like, you know, you know it's kind of like iron, iron sharpens iron. Like one of the, there's a quote I think about often, uh, it's a Nipsey hustle quote. Um, where he was saying, like, if you look at the circle of people around you and you're not, like, inspired and motivated to do great things, then you don't have a circle. You have a cage. Right. And, like, that's that's mm-hmm. goddamn right. And like, like, R.I.P. Yeah, Nipsey. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Nipsey. Quote. Yeah. Yeah. Quote. And that, like, yeah. you know, and, and that, like, we have a really good circle now. And, you know, and that, and that, and that when you have a really good circle, people want to join it. And because yeah. they, they want that inspiration, too. And then we've yeah. been at the point now where, like, the snowball started to roll. That, yeah, talking about family, you know, just, just to name a few people that have been hugely involved is, like, Dave's dad, um, Don, absolute awesome human being. Um, you know, you ask him to do something, it's there the next day. Mm-hmm. He's um, He's been so good. He um, he actually owns a rectory building that's tied to it with Dave's two brothers. Perfect. Um, so, I mean, there, there you go. There's family. But, like, um, Jennifer Russell, she's oh, yeah. currently the president of Lewis. Um, she, it, one of those people who just turned up was like, whoa, these guys, you know. They're got doing it going something on. cool, and I want to be part of it. And here she is, still going. You know, right. um, talk to her multiple times a week, and she, she's earned every bragging right to say that she's a founding member of of this place. Oh yeah. Um, and then who else? We got like Gabe. He's the architect. He's with V Three Studios over in um, Sutton Boulevard in Maplewoods. And again, just like, I, is he your homie before? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Like, I don't even question. Everybody's where tied these, together. Yeah. I don't even question where these people come from because I'm like they. They're here. They want to be here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, your cousin Steven, lawyer, serving yeah. with us. Like Morning. Chris, you know, just like you, you see these people and they, they keep coming back. And when they come back, you're like, yeah, yeah they, they want to be here, man, you know. Man, I was doing volunteer work at KHVT in 2012, man. Yeah. Don't play with my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that leads into, like, what, what, what motivates? Like, what it's been 10 years, man. You would think like 10 years and you still are needing more money. You still need more work. Obviously you knew it was a big project getting into yeah. it, but what motivates you? You, do you like love skateboarding or do I you mean, just love? I don't, I don't really skate for real. Yeah. I used to skate when I was a kid, but I don't really skate. People give me yeah. shit all the time. Like, <laughs> how do you get what I mean yeah. about the, the cap out? It's like, you get, you can like, you know, be a nice spectator at a certain it. age. Like, damn, I can't believe this motherfucker just jumped off there. My knees hurt. Just looking yeah, at you know, it. Same like, about athletes and music. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I love that song, but I'm not, I'm not People give me that. shit all the time. They're like, how do you, I got a skate park. You know, skate. I'm like, it's kind of like how you like hip hop, but you don't rap. It's so, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> It's kind of like that. It's like that. You know, like look at someone Man, like, oh, like you know, take them to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, it's kind of like yeah, he know, out. He out cold. Look at like, the look like Russell He's Simmons. Down. Russell Simmons is an excellent example. Russell yeah. Simmons has founded Def Jam. Russell Simmons don't rap. Russell Simmons don't make yeah. beats. Russell, but yeah. you cannot argue that Russell Simmons is very important in the history of hip hop. So because important. Because we know he, he loves, loves he, is the he loves hip hop. He understands how important hip hop is to society and what it means to kids coming up. And so, like those behind the scenes people. Yeah, and that's important. Oh yeah, I, when so. we when we were first pulling up around this table earlier on, like I was figuring out who was half coast and who was yeah. with views, and uh, like I seen those two dudes stand up, and I was like, damn, if I met those in, those guys in a coffee shop, I'd never be like, yeah, they were like sound engineers, they were like running yeah. their own studio, and I'm like, I love the world, like yeah, you cannot yeah. predict no, what someone's you getting up know. to in their free time, and you like that's know. what's so good about it. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, it's no, I love that. It's man. fun. I love yeah. that. So, but yeah. I, recently, I, I noticed that Dave. Um, oh, he's got to fire up his ass to get this gallery going. It's, I mean, he's talked about it enough today. Let's not start him again. But it's like, it's like, I was like, ah, oh, this is what he's been waiting for. And like that level of patience to put up with all the skate parks and all the shows and everything for that, for like your, you know, passion fire not being lit yet is like pretty admirable. I, I, was, like, I was like, so okay, people like I, gotta, Dave, yeah. I gotta make sure this gallery yeah. is like top notch and like just love get the shot back out. Yeah, yeah, get the yeah, shot, yeah, back, out, the shot, shot back, back out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like, I like uh, the, the skate park and stuff too. Like all, all, all those different parts are really important to me. But like yeah. my background is in like design and architecture and art and stuff. And like mm-hmm. and like a lot of the and but I understand that that's a really broad net and that within that you know you like you know, skateboarding and art and a lot of these things all come together. So it's all yeah, it's all yeah, and if skateboarding exactly. brings them exactly. in, but then they learn how to weld or they learn how to they learn like how the blood of the to tuck point because those where the most exactly. volunteers came from. You know what I'm saying? They're skaters. Like, they want to skate. Yeah. They well, want you, you need an avenue too for a lot of kids and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And skateboarding is like that's kind of like the my it's, the thing. it's the, the, it's the, the new way. It's the tip man. of the spear for working with a lot of kids. You know, that like you know, like you're saying, if you if you think like the place is lame, you're not going to go there. There's not one kid I've ever seen 
they might think I wasn't that cool until I pop the ollie and then they're like, oh, three year olds, two year olds. level. Through they, the even if they don't skate, if you take them there, they're going to run up the ramps. They're going to play. This, yeah. this I don't know, Chris, you kind of got that swagger. I think people look across the street like, look at that guy with that. That dude's pretty fucking cool, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, like, you know, and then it get cooler when I start doing a trick. If I hit a kickflip, I'm feeling like the shit that day. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, uh, I just seen that. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so that goes with motivate. I mean, it's, it's easy. Cause even when I got in there, I, I was inspired immediately. So I could see the vision. It's just, how do we get help with the vision and stuff like that? So tell people how they can support. I know they can buy merch. Um, there's, there's a GoFundMe link. Obviously yes. we're going to push this out on social media heavy, but like, tell, tell us ways we can help. So the GoFundMe link uh, is on our website. Also, I mean, we are a 501c3. So we take, you know, we can do tax write-offs. If someone would okay. like to give like a tax deductible donation, we, we, we do that as well. Um, and then, I mean, if they just want to give to the GoFundMe, um, I mean, we do volunteer days. If people want to come through and literally like use their two hands to help us with stuff, like we need that too. Right. We also not only like physical labor, but like we, um, I mean, there's like we. I mean, there's like people donated lights, lights last week. Know? Someone, yeah. we've got a friend who's an electrician, and he said he sees things on job sites, and he's like, "Oh, you're about to throw that out in the trash." Like hell no, and he. He gave us like, he gave us two work lights so they, like you'd normally just think these yellow things and whatever and then he gave us the Megatron and me it's and Dave were crazy working bright. on a ceiling yeah. in the basement on Saturday night and uh, Brian's wife Emily brings down this box and I'm like oh I can't wait to plug this it's thing in, the sun in and a box. like yeah <laughs> Bro, <laughs> and, what? I, and I plugged it into this room and this. I was just like am I outside <laughs> like what's Whoa. happened and then I like unplugged it and it's just like a 200 lumen bulb that we'd been using the whole time and yeah. then just like the sun <laughs> and I was yeah. just like Whoa. it's just like it's like a stadium turns on it's like yeah it's like there a 20,000 yeah. lumen fixture like yeah. it's just like Bwow. part of the basement I've never seen daylight in there because we have the soundproofing up to the windows and you know for security and whatnot yeah. so I, I take this light into there and I'm like damn the walls are like this cool tropical teal color <laughs> and I had no idea <laughs> I mean, I mean seven like years. six years and six I didn't years. know the color of that room because I've never had a light bright enough and I was like that's rad <laughs> I like that color yeah. I mean I, yeah. really anyway anyone can think to help yeah. like I mean like we need like I mean we could use a decent amount of legal advice like you know we yeah, have an uh, attorney that we're working with but like you know it's good to get opinions on all that stuff like account like we have an accountant mm -hmm. through uh volunteer lawyers and accounts for the arts yeah. that's been helping us. Um, you know, at this point, I think the number one thing we need is just like, we need to pay for, basically we're trying to get occupancy permits. And so in order we to can do that, people in, yeah, in order know? that we need to be able to do, you know, health and safety stuff. We have to build, you know, modern HVAC, modern You need electric. a million dollars before that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. roughly what you got. That's about, need. that would yeah. do the church and the rectory up to full occu modern occupancy permit. Yeah. Codes. I mean, like, but yeah, if, I mean, if someone's out there listening and it's like they're commercial grade electrician or they're doing HVAC, like all yeah. those things, like they can help us even if it's through their company with like material donations or if it's for right. time. Yeah, um, if I want to volunteer your actual labor, you know? Yeah, labor if people, do. yeah, people have got a skill they want to teach. That's what sometimes reach out, people reach out and they're like, hey, I do like murals. I'd be happy to teach the kids how to do that. Right. So it's like there's anything if they think yeah. that our church would be interested in it we're probably going to say yeah, yeah. yeah might not be even if it's a field trip yet, where you yeah, have like a uh, uh, lewis and clark tech race. school come in there party yeah, with like, youth groups i mean also yeah. people who have a background tell them about the drone race yeah, man yeah, mm -hmm. drone race. yeah people who have a background in fundraising too one of the biggest who, the world's biggest drone race yeah i know it's like it's pretty cool dave it's, dave um dropped the bomb the other day that they we've been having like a winter series for drone racing going on in the church like a monthly meet and Normally they're in the summer, they're outside in fields, big drones. And these are like little micro they ones. They go through the ramps. Yeah. The and they, they do, they, they set up all these, um, gates, yeah. gates and, and they like race around. Cameras it's on it's them. so like, fast in a headset that I don't even know how they, it almost makes you nauseous. But, um, they were telling Dave that the last one we had the world's number one and two fastest drone racers had never met in a race mm -hmm. and they actually met in a race in a church more history yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean so like and that's that's the first time it's like broadcast live on youtube and that like i didn't even yeah. these guys didn't really tell us that and then when i find that out i was like at people home are humble they don't and i'm like they, they yeah and I, i'm like cool. watching it live and i'm like damn i'm watching our church just now with like drone racing this is like super yeah, cool they, and that's yeah. one of the other uses that other kind of other than a skate park that we're mm -hmm. talking about they're like the drone racing community they were saying like they're always in like warehouses or parks or whatever mm -hmm. and then you know they can put they have the organ law they put gates all over and it's this mm -hmm. crazy graffiti covered skate park environment and they said just kept blowing up because then people would like be tuning in to watch their race and like where the fuck is this yes. it's like taller than any yeah. other warehouse 65 oh, yeah. feet yeah. tall yeah. you can go up high they can set the right. gates yeah. all over and so as we do our construction later mm -hmm. we want to be able to set up so they can hang gates in weird places and like we want to yeah. be like a home for drone racing in st louis right. because mm -hmm. that's a community that needs a space that they can that can be theirs yeah. or, or it's just like, another 
aerial yeah. slopes or skateboarding. Yeah. It just or makes sense whatever, for it to be know? in a church because it's community and it yeah. brings, brings people together so they can share their talents. There's yeah. a certain vibe you get when you're in the church, and there's a certain sense, like you said, of community. And community is important. You know, in North St. Louis, like being a staple in that rebuild, there's a lot of stuff going on over there. There's N- NGAs over there. Yeah. Squares yeah. moving back ab- above St. Patrick Center. There, yeah, there are. There. That's yeah, that's on a. Um, North Tucker 900. North yeah. North you know anything about that? I know a little bit Dave. about that. I'm doing some work on that. Building. Do you? Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> well, like <laughs> development. Been there for like two years. There's money going down. There's money going down. There's just now, Dave. Yep. There's money going down near you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there definitely is. And when there's yeah. money there, there that, yeah. that means more likelihood that the skate park. Building the hospital in Pruitt, I go. Yeah. They, um, there's a bunch of houses. Don't call it a hospital. They built an. A it's very a, small urgent a training care. Training <laughs> urgent care. <laughs> and, uh, a yeah. medical school. A medical yeah, no, no. I mean, yeah, there's, I think that we, we spoke about it earlier. Like the, the stigma that North City has is actually because wealthy people just haven't seen a use for it yet. And that's what's changing as well is like people with money are now realizing with the NGA moving in and with projects Jobs like ours. And there. yeah, like you're saying, the old post dispatch, like it's kind of moving back that way because. St. Louis downtown's full, so it has to go somewhere. So. It's a tech hub. Yeah. It's a mini Silicon Valley. Oh, it's really? starting yeah. to become. Silicon Prairie, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, the Silicon Valley of the Midwest. Silicon Prairie. That's the term for it. Is it? Yeah. I didn't even yeah. know that. You work in the building, Silicon. so you know. But yeah. like, Silicon Prairie is the term for Square's a huge company, and like NJA yeah. is like a, it's like a huge company. You know, I think in St. Louis is interesting in this that like, um, <laughs> you know, you have a lot of these places like, like for like they always talk about the Del Mar divide and stuff that you have a lot mm-hmm. of people, you know, especially out in the county that like they come to St. Louis for like a Cardinals game. Other than that, like yeah. they don't, they don't, they don't cross and it. They barely want to do that. They barely right. want to do that. Cause they like, ain't really so in the loo. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. They don't want to talk about it. We'll ward you like, from my boy. Ago, we did these Shakespeare plays. We did a 12 play shake, like immersive Shakespeare, like they, they did Macbeth. And uh, they like completely, it's like one of those immersive plays where there's no audience, there's no stage, just the actors are doing their thing and they're just kind of in the middle of everything, you know, fight, you know, sword fighting or gun fighting and right. acting. And it's, it's ama- it was amazing, but it was, they did like a secret location and then pick people up and bust them over to the church. And it was um, interesting talking with people there, like all, all these like kind of people like, yo, I've never been to North St. Louis before, you know, grew up in St. Imagine Louis your entire that. life, you know, yeah. like yeah. live in West County, never go past the loop type of thing. And well, like, I live in know, South City and I'm very, I, it's just where where you go is like that. And then it's like, yeah. I work downtown at Ballpark Village. And what's Village so crazy, the city's just too small for that, man. It's three miles yeah, away. I live on King's Highway. I live on South King's Highway. 15 minutes away, man. I live on South King's Highway and North King's Highway is just right up the street, three oh, miles yeah. away, yep. you know? I would so. see people are always like, man, I see you're on the north side. Like, yeah, like, is it like real dangerous? I'm like, yeah, bro, I get murdered all the time. Like, no, it's like, it's like <laughs> the minute you step there, someone immediately kills yeah, you. Man. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, you know, I like, know it was so it's, annoying. It's, it's people it's are like, so oh, like, I must be, you must get a lot of break-ins and stuff. And I'm like, no. I lived off the loop when I first moved here. And I was like, my car got broken into four times. My in car two gets years. broken into in South my, City all the my time. My car has so. never it been broken into at the church. I can leave it unlocked outside, and it doesn't even get touched. Yeah. I mean, it's like crazy. I don't yeah, do that. Man, I don't leave. My- <laughs> we're trying to change the future, man. And we like our neighbors. Our neighbors around us are like we have a great relationship with all of them. I think. Yeah. I mean, like we were in like a really awesome kind of just like working class community, and uh, mm-hmm. like all of our neighbors are. And we try to be very good neighbors, and like we. Mo- I mean, a huge. When we were throwing those parties and stuff, a huge amount of the money that we would pull from those went to like security costs and like making sure that we kept like it real chill and and calm for the neighbors Mm -hmm. and like to keep it safe for the people that were there and like you know getting it as set up as we can and we want to like kind of kind of continue that philosophy going forward to like you know we really want to be like an asset to our neighborhood to our community and to the to the city as a whole right and and to create something that i think i think kids need that type of shit like they need like interesting cool third spaces to nurture their creativity they need a place to go like it says a lot if your kid is safe in north st louis at this church maybe you should kind of like change there's perspective yeah and, right. the lens that and you, you guys are changing the narrative you guys are changing mm-hmm. the narrative with it and and that just like kind of leads into my next thing like i mean skate laborious you know build awareness but more than just building awareness you guys are more than a skate park you know and and i wanted to talk more about some of the people that have skated there because i know like lil wayne is pretty well known but who who other well known has been there i mean steve there's, caballero okay Tony Steve Hawk, Barrow, Christian Asoy, Christian Asoy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What are you talking Bikers about? Bikers too, BMX, Rick McCrank? Matt Hoffman's been yeah, there. Yeah, Matt Hoffman's been there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah Rick McCrank. They um, they know what's up. Yeah, it's a long, it's a, it's a pretty long laundry list. The list, we've done, the list we've done a bunch of photos. Grown. Like Tool did a photo shoot there a couple years ago. Tool uh, did? Uh, Damn, yeah, bro, we was this? Yeah, it's on their new yeah, album. I know. Uh, someone, uh, yeah. someone uh, that we know. From uh, like, bro, what year was this? Was I here for no, this? like, like right after last we got year building that pyramid. Damn, yeah. bro, I would have totally am, came and like took a picture with two. I wish I didn't know. So us, someone, they someone said to us specifically not to do that. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Someone said to us, hey, like you know, can we um, 
can we bring? I mean, it can uh, at least be. Like, we we don't try to bring private. everybody. Well, we shoot, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. like, so. I, I, me and Bedwell mm-hmm. are just there's this artist I've done a bunch of work for named Jim mm-hmm. Denovan. I'm actually heading to do yeah. a project with him on the 20th. We're okay. doing a bunch of stuff in uh, down in Mexico, um, but he. Uh, I, me and Brian just got done building this big pyramid thing. I brought Bedwell with me for the Forum Festival, and I was like in the airport, and I got a call. And they're like, "Hey," and he's like, "I'm," with, and he was a photographer um, who had done a shoot. What's the singer from Alice in Chains? Oh no, that it's a guitarist. It was Jerry Cantrell. Jerry Cantrell. Jerry Cantrell. So none of us so, actually knew that knew Jerry Cantrell yeah. was there, and then all of a sudden his picture is like on his Instagram and all this. He's got a huge media. following. You're People like, are like, oh my God, I love Jerry Cantrell. And we were like, so yep, didn't know he was in too. our building. We do yeah. too. Yeah, so this <laughs> photographer, I guess, knew the photographer who did the Jerry Cantrell shoot, I believe, and he hit me up and it was like, yo, I want to do a photo shoot with Tool at the church. And I was like, all right, I'm at the airport coming back from Arizona. Um, I'm actually like right by where Maynard's went winery is mm-hmm. and he was like oh i was like when are you gonna do it he's like tomorrow i was like oh okay all right sounds good and so they sent all the you know, ndas and uh, yeah. location mm-hmm. stuff over and they came down they were really nice guys they gave us a bunch of like tickets and backstage passes and went to the show and like they were mm-hmm. they were really cool they used to, i think they used the photo for their album it's the, the you showed me the room of where they like was Bedry the old album room last year i think so i, I think mean, like kids at, wasn't long in the world up. or like is that the vhs room you showed me when we were there <laughs> yeah with all the old VHS that's where they that's yeah. they used oh, to seen it? yeah i've been there right yeah the whole play brought it we did the old tour like went in there Man, well, a movie like, needs to happen there, right? But okay. some kid just gets the key and gets to be there for a day or something. We've had a couple movies. Yeah. 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 We've had, um, we've had some pretty cool. The cool underground ones. press that you have got, and now it's like coming to the local media, and people are figuring out this. Like all the magazines are seeing it and all that, and like that's what I think is so dope about how you guys came up. Because I it would be easy it. to be like, yes, let's get the word out, but then that wouldn't have been organic, and you might have yeah. stumbled or kept something. it on the low. Yeah. 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 I love the Atlas no. Obscura once put us his front cover on their website, yeah. all over social media and stuff as well. No, no clearance from any of us. Like, yeah. you know, we didn't care whatever. We just did it. But like, like, then we look at all the pictures and we're like, who the fuck is this BMXer in all these pictures? And then our homie Zach Warden's like, oh yeah, I know that guy. He came and rode with me from California. Like he's, you know, pro right. BMXer, uh, Zach, he's the one who built the vert ramp. And uh, yeah, he was like, oh yeah, he came from California. Like we were doing a demo somewhere or whatever. Yeah. And he passed through town and then the Atlas Obscure couldn't get in touch with any of us. I don't know if we didn't answer. Like, I think that's the time something. where like, we had a Facebook You had an email, yeah, yeah. but the email like, didn't work. Or, like, so going through, they like, had to know. just find someone who had pictures at a place. So then this guy from California who'd been there like one day one sold his pictures sold to them. Atlas Obscura. And we're like, what? <laughs> Motherfucker, dude. <laughs> yeah. Give, give us, us that money. Give us 20 bucks or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, buy us a bag of concrete. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I just got caught sleeping not being organized. But damn, that's crazy. So that. Hey, but so you're on the come good. up now. Place and yeah, yeah, and the people yeah. are just like blowing us up. Like, like, chat. oh yeah, we seen you on Atlas Obscure. And like, yeah, we didn't know we're on it. Yeah. So <laughs> It's cool though, man. Like you said, the front page of Reddit. So yeah. um, to close it out though, I want to tell people how to find you. Tell people, you know, I know you went into how they can support <laughs> Um, but if they can't support financially, like I said, tell them where to find you on social just to share it. Because if they just share it, this we stuff, do most everything on Instagram. So okay, I mean, it's yeah. just skate laborious spelled S K with the number eight S K eight L I B O R I U S. And then I mean, we're on Facebook as well and TikTok and it's yeah, skate yeah. laborious social club on Facebook. On Facebook yeah. um, and then we have. We don't really have TikTok though. That's like yeah, the, they should. The TikTok's right, popping. So we, TikTok's like, popping. Yeah. we had a video I'm went viral of us. TikTok. It was like <laughs> somebody I don't like, need the man. I need to do <laughs> something. Are you the social it. media guy? I just, yeah, I just doesn't mean I'm good at TikTok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, I just made a TikTok because yeah. we, this vi- somebody, a bunch of people hit me up like, yo, this video, the church that somebody took there is going viral on TikTok, and mm-hmm. they sent me the link, and I tried to look at it, I couldn't look. I was like, I just gotta make a I gotta TikTok. download it. So I made one for the church. I was like, oh, this thing's got like like seven hundred fifty thousand views or whatever. I was like, that's cool. So I made a TikTok, and every once in a while, when it like dawns on me, I'll upload. You'll just do a yeah. little quick video. Yeah, yeah. Something. We do like have a website work. as well, though, skatelaborious.com. Um, and yeah, definitely yeah, skate, go there and check it out, guys. Yeah, yeah. skatelaborious at gmail.com as well. Email YouTube, address. you guys are on Yeah, yeah we're on YouTube. 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 Um, yeah, yeah and just if you if there's something that wants to reach out to help, just reach out, you know, email right. or send us a DM or whatever. You know, if you are, have fundraising experience or legal experience, you've been listening to this podcast and you can think of some thing that you might want to offer that you think we could use uh, in order to, you know, you believe in kind of the mission that we're trying to do and with the work that we want to accomplish and you'd like to help us do it. Like we are all ears and all open. Like it takes all kinds and anybody who wants right. to help, we're, yeah. we're all for it's it. It's an army, man. It's an army. Yeah. Of, it's an army of love that you guys got going, man. And, it, and it's huge. So I want to thank you guys for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you so much. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Luke. Yes, STO sir. Bucket list. Yes, STO bucket list STO show. Bucket list. <laughs> this closes it out, guys. We're at Half Coast Studios. If you have a podcast or you want a podcast, come here. They record it right here in St. Louis. Put it on YouT
all the sources. So hit them up, guys, and Skate Laborious, coolest place in St. Louis, the ultimate STL bucket list destination. Check these guys out, the man. The ultimate. Um, ultimate. Yeah.